I would say to people, draw a picture of yourself, draw your home and family, draw yourself at work, you know, uh, draw your treatment. I mean, if you drew me a black picture, I'd say, you got to change this or stop or don't do it. But if they did something beautiful, full of color, I'd say, don't worry, you're not going to have any side effects or any problems. You'll do fine. See, and the kids, I mean, the doctors at the hospital at first thought Siegel's out of his freaking mind, you know, walking around with a box of crayons in his pocket and giving it to patients in the emergency room. And But it was because I drew a picture for Elizabeth Kugler-Ross and I couldn't believe what she was telling me about myself from this outdoor scene. I mean, something very simple, like using a white crayon. And she said, what are you covering up? The page is already white. You don't need a white crayon and numbers of things. Why is eight important to you? What do you mean? There are eight trees. Uh, so it was on and on. Um, and when I think about it now, eight is a new beginning. That number, you know, every religion has seven days in the week, but not the same number of days in a month. But the eighth day is that new day. And um, I really think that was, again, my new beginning I was changing my life because of what I drew for her. And I couldn't believe how much she knew about me from this stupid outdoor scene. Uh, you know, it didn't mean anything. It was just something to show her, but it meant a hell of a lot. And I think that's why people can learn about themselves too by drawing pictures, by their dreams. Uh, they do have meaning. And yeah, one of my books is called The Art of Healing. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a Jungian therapist and art therapist, but I show them drawings that patients have done that I've done, and it's easy to tell, you know, if you draw your treatment as black, uh, it's not too thrilling a picture. I have one, it's hard for me to stop talking. I have one drawing on the wall in my house by uh, an eight-year-old because I told her mother, stop dragging her around the globe trying to cure cancer. Take her home and love her. You know, what you're doing to your daughter is your problem, not hers. So <clears throat> she said, all right, I'll do that. And when Amber was in the hospital one time, I came into her room and she had drawn a picture. And on it was the face of a child crying. I said, oh, who's this? That's not me. That's the kid in the next room crying. See, she used certain colors, the kid in the next room. For herself, she drew a purple balloon up in the air with her name in it, which means I'm ready to die and go to heaven. And under it was like something like eight straight little symbols that looked like almost like a flower, you know, some decoration. I said to her mother, she's ready to go. Take her home and love her. I said, I don't know what the eight little things mean. Eight days later, my phone rings. Bernie, today is my birthday. Amber woke up and said, Mom, I'm dying today as a gift to you to free you from all the trouble. And that still hangs in my house. But what a freedom it gave her mother. And even in the picture, there was a face of a child crying. I don't know if I mentioned this. And I said, who's this? She said, not me. That's the kid in the next room crying. So even the child with a box of crayons changes their colors, what they're doing when they're drawing the kid in the next room. And uh, it's a wonderful way to decide what occupation I want, where I'll go to school, um, what I'll be, you know, when I grow up, all those things. Um, and I got to tell you one funny story. I used to paint portraits of every creature in our house to relax me in the evening when I came home from the hospital. And, and I mean that literally, cats, dogs, turtles. I mean, you'd be amazed at what portraits that are hanging in the house. Um, and as I'm coming up the driveway, every living thing in the house is running away from it. 
they ran out into the front yard where I kept the animals and opened that fence and ran away. And I thought, oh my God, the house wants to be on fire. So I yelled out the car window, what is it? Is the house on fire? What happened? I heard this little squeaky voice. No, we're tired of posing for you. We're tired of sitting and sitting every time you come home. We don't want to sit. I yelled, okay, okay, I'll paint a picture of myself. It's all right. I will, I'll leave you alone. I'll put a mirror up and paint myself. They all went back in the house, all the kids and all the pets. And I always thank them because that's when I painted myself covered up, you know, hat, mask. And I should have been smart enough because when I painted a portrait of my wife, put her in an evening gown. And I said, that's not you. I don't like that painting. So I painted her as the active person she was with her bike, two-wheeled bike. Um, and I did that in a few days because there's the real person. Yeah. But I had no trouble painting myself hidden. That really woke me up. So people can draw pictures of themselves and then look at it the next day. Even though you're not an art therapist, it'll mean something to you when you look at it with a clear mind. You know, what color, what shape, what size, different things are. And it's easy to tell. Because I used to use that for the parents too. Um, so they'd see how their kids felt about going in the operating room and what they needed from them. And it changed all the doctors, you see, especially with kids, because they didn't have a problem. I'm not an artist, you know, like an adult. Um, and they could see, let me give you an example. So, um, <clears throat> one of the <clears throat> anesthesiologists made up a little booklet and he'd give it to every kid to get them to fill in all the pages. So it was how they felt about the operating room, their parents and the, you know, meeting them at the end and on and on. The first page said, you meet an anesthesiologist dressed in an outfit that looks like green pajamas. This kid drew the anesthesiologist in red. And I said to the anesthesiologist, look at the last page. If he's telling you there's danger here, I could die. If he draws himself purple, I'm sending him home. And the anesthesiologist turned to the last page and he said, no, he didn't draw purple. So I knew I'm not gonna die. And he said, but what he knows, Bernie, is his mother has a genetic defect and he could have a reaction to muscle relaxants that could threaten his life. And he must have known that and that's why he put the red in. So he is letting us know he knows there's danger here and we'll be careful with him. So he went through it and was fine. And it was a way for me to help parents too. You know, how they drew their operating room. I show you how your parents, how your kids feel about what they're going through and to help you take care of them. And I may add, when you ask doctors to draw themselves working as a doctor, they don't put patients in the drawing. They put themselves, sometimes instruments, uh, a diploma on the wall, and rarely do they ever put a patient in the room with them in the drawing. That blew my mind the first time I did it with medical students. I couldn't believe it. I said, draw yourself working as a doctor. It wasn't only one picture in the whole class was standing in front of a woman in a wheelchair. Wow, that speaks volumes, right? You know, and sometimes right. when we, when we zoom in. Schools to respond with, a, that's a wonderful idea. Because I said to them, when people send you an application, say, draw a picture of yourself working as a doctor, and put it in with the application. And then you can help them become a real doctor and care for people, a teacher. 